Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your Master of Fun and Wonder, your Viceroy of Verisimilitude, and as John Campia calls me, your existential Mr. Rogers. That's right, Robert Meyer Burnett, and this is the John Campia Mailbag, John Campia Show Mailbag, for Friday, April 29th. So as you know, during the live John Campia Show during the week, we open up the Super Chats, and you can send us a Super Chat to be read live on that show. But if you can't do that, we also leave our tip line open 24-7. The link is right down below here in the description. You can click on that link. Uh, it's on every show. It's in the description of every show. And 24-7, seven days a week, you can send us a tip. And, of course, if we deem it, well, worthy or appropriate, we will read it on the mailbag. So you can converse with us 24-7, seven days a week, I would assume 365 days a year, which is pretty exciting. And this, again, is the mailbag for Friday, April 29th. My God, this month went by fast. I'm actually coming to you from my new office inside the new John Campia Studios. Uh, I have nothing in my office yet, so we moved Henry Cavill in here to give it something to look at instead of just my ugly mug. But uh, here we go. Let's just jump right into these questions. We start with Anonymous. Anonymous said, I never heard you ask for show name ideas, but I've noticed people sending them in. So the real round table, because it's real like movies, but also real like we're the best. The OG, the shiznit. You're welcome. Not a bad name. A little generic, though. A little generic. I think uh, we're kind of looking for something... You know, a little bit more, a little bit more uh, sexy. I don't mean literally sexy. I mean that figuratively. But literally sexy could be good too. Uh, Nathaniel M M M Molnar, Molnar says, "Hey crew, show name idea for you. Bring on the talk. Succinct, catchy, and merges a couple of your brands together. I'll let you know where you can mail me my residual checks. Just kidding. Thanks for all you do. Well, Nathaniel, not a bad name, but bring on the talks a little generic. The talk about what? Uh, could be talk about anything, but uh, not a bad idea. Uh, Ask a Lad says, It's too bad the MCU had to suck up all the box office from the Northmen. Unbearable weight and everything everywhere. These superhero movies are ruining cinema. Oh, Wait. Well, you know, I don't think they I don't think they are sucking up the box office. They're just giving people what people want to see. And um, you know, it's I, I would like to see the Northman do better. And Everything Everywhere is still one of the greatest movies of the year. So check it out if you haven't already. But that was very funny, Ask a Lad. Joe Fosho. Joe Fosho sends in a twenty dollar tip. Why thank you, Joe Fosho. Do you think Henry Cavill will enter the MCU anytime soon. He seems like the perfect fit for so many characters. Cyclops, maybe? What are your thoughts? Wow, I never thought about that. You know, that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. A, a large strapping lad like our boy uh, Mr. Cavill back here? Uh, why not? But we'll see. I'd really like to see him come back as Superman one more time, though. Really? I mean, come on, wouldn't you? But I like the idea of him playing Cyclops. I never thought of that before. That's pretty good. War Doctor 10. Ah, the War Doctor. I need to get a figure of him. Hi, John and crew. What is the likelihood of Storm accompanying Professor X in the Multiverse of Madness since it's rumored she'll be in Black Panther 2? Mm. Also, over or under 30%, K. Hugh Kwan huh, comes back, reprises his role as short round for Indy 5. I, I never thought about him coming back for Indy 5. Maybe he would. I think that's actually a cool idea. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen, <laughs> but I think they would have announced it if it would have, but maybe not. Um, I like that idea. And Storm being with Professor X, look, I think all bets are off now that Patrick Stewart, we know Patrick Stewart is in Multiverse of Madness playing Professor Xavier. We have seen now in one of the TV spots the uh, his floating wheelchair, which is not a wheelchair because it's floating, his hover chair from the X-Men animated series in live action. So we know it's coming. And I, I don't know what that means, but maybe Storm could be there. And if she is indeed in Wakanda Forever, I have not heard that. But if she is, you know, to me, all bets are off. All bets really are off. So I, you know, it's hard. I, I, I don't know what to say. 
I don't know what to say about that. I guess we're going to find out next week. Find out next week. Uh, Andrew M. sends in a tip and says, I watched Dodgeball on Disney Plus and noticed they removed jokes from the film. They did? Not even offensive, outdated ones, just bad language. To me, if they can't show the full films, don't have them on there. Frustrating to watch a film, and it's got funny lines missing. Wow. Andrew M., I did not know that. That is something that I think that we should all look into and be ever vigilant to make sure that these things are not happening. Because that's not good. It's censorship. I don't buy it. I don't like it. It Shouldn't be happening. Casey McNack sends in a tip and says, Hey, John and crew. I hope you're having a fantastic week at CinemaCon this week. Well, we did. It's Friday. I'm back. But I had a lovely time. I myself will likely be planning a triple feature featuring the Northman, the weight of massive talent, and maybe even the bad guys as well. I also wanted to ask you, have you seen the newest trailer for the next Amazon series called Night Sky? It looks really interesting, and it stars Sissy Spacek and J.K. Simmons. It's about them discovering a portal to another world. Check it out if you haven't already, and have a fantastic week. Well, Casey... Look, I'll watch anything science fiction, fantasy, or horror, and I that trailer looked fantastic to me. Can not wait. Can not wait. Um, I don't know anything about the show, but it looks great. And that triple feature you're going to also sounds amazing. But Night Sky, uh, just the cast alone would make me want to watch it. But it looks really, really good. And we shall see. Um, really, it, it does look fantastic and very intriguing. Uh, Colbatron. Colbatron sends in a tip and says, Hey crew, my suggestion for the new show name is The Fourth Wall Breakdown. I like that. I, I mean, I don't know if John would like that. I, 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 you, obviously, it's his, it's his decision. but some, Or just Fourth Wall Breakdown. Something like that. That's actually pretty cool. I like that idea. I, you know, I don't, again, it's hard for me to say whether it's the fourth wall breakdown, or just, I like fourth, not the, but just sending like, the Facebook. No, how about Facebook? Drop the the. Um, fourth wall breakdown. I like that. That's a cool title. Um, congrats on the new studio. Love to see the show growing. Thanks, and bring on the filthy. Well, yep, uh, we're, we're moving into the new digs, and here we are, which is a lot of fun. So, hey, thanks for that. And I like that, the fourth wall breakdown. Chad uh, Allspa says, Hey, John and or Rob, it's me. I would offer another perspective on the favorite versus best movie categorizations. I love this. One movie can be more skillfully crafted, thus making it a better movie from a craftsman perspective, but it may not be as enjoyable to you personally. I totally, I'm with Chad. I'm with you 100% on that. Uh, You know, to me, the best favorite thing I, I... I think because it's all based on opinion. Like, I know that there are movies that are incredibly well made. I'll I'll give you an example. I'm not a big fan of Jane Campion as a director. But that I can recognize that she's a great craftsperson, a great director, really knows what she's doing. And I, uh, she tells the stories that she wants to tell and she has a really interesting perspective. I just don't necessarily dig that perspective. Now, I think her movies are really well done, but I don't like them. And that's my personal preference. Um, But that doesn't mean they're not good. Best favorite. So, Um, Chad goes on to say, So far, I'm really loving Moon Knight, and I think it's a great show, but I'm not sure it's a great Moon Knight show. It's a great Mark Spector show, as I spit, I apologize, and a great Steven show, but I want more Moon Knight. I love it, but I still wish we had more suit. Thoughts? Well, Chad, I have to say, look, as as everyone knows, I'm a diehard Moon Knight fan. This is not the Moon Knight show that I would have made if I was given a choice. To me, it's it's leaning very heavily into the Khonshu Egyptian mythology and the disassociative identity disorder um, of Mark Spector. But I agree with you. To me, Moon Knight was a little bit more grounded than what we're seeing here. Um, I still think the show is incredibly well done. It's just not the show that I would have made. Um, But I think you're right. Moon Knight as superhero has kind of 
been secondary to this. I, and again, I'm not even convinced that any uh, where's the where does reality end and begin in this show? I'm, I don't know. So it'll be hard to see, hard to figure out. I, I but I think it's not the Moon Knight show that I would have made. Uh, but then again, the entire their entire vision for Moon Knight in this show is different than I thought they would would do, and um, it's I, I find it interesting. I just don't quite know if it was the way to go, but we'll see. I'll wait till it's done. Scott Brown says Northman was really good, great acting, great cinematography, good score, and that one shot berserker scene. Wow, that was awesome. One negative would be that you're not sure who the villain is, but I think that's intentional. Everyone thinks they are the hero. Well, Scott, you're right there. Um, I have yet to see the Northman, to my great shame, um, but I'm, I'm going to try and uh, catch it this weekend. I can't wait. Uh, really excited. I'm a big fan of Robert Eggers, so I'm looking forward to this. But from what you're saying, it, it even makes me want to see it even more. So that's uh, always a good thing. Bob Paycheck uh, sends in show name suggestion, the multiplex of radness. Um, well, you know me. Uh, anytime anyone uses the word rad or radness or, or the rad in a sentence, I get excited. But, you know, it's not a bad name. But again, we talk about streaming and things outside the multiplex as well. So I don't know if it encompasses everything we do, but it's not a bad name. Not a bad name. Rasmus Nielsen says, Hey, John and Rob. Well, it's me. Regards all the way from Denmark. I have been to Denmark. I love Denmark. I was there for two weeks and I had a lovely time. I would like to thank you guys for the amazing work you do on the channel. You're all just incredible. And new show name idea. Surprise, surprise. No cuts. <laughs> no cuts. Um, that's interesting. I, you know, no cuts. I, I keep thinking of the Incredibles. No capes. No capes, but no cuts. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting name. I I, I want to really thank you for your very generous fifty dollar tip for the channel. Um, it will it I can I can honestly say that uh, the money that you guys throw our way to support this channel is definitely being used well in terms of setting up this new studio space. We're going to bring you a slicker show than ever before. It's going to look great in here. Um, again, I've got nothing in my office, but I will soon. And um, that will be most excellent. But I want to thank you so much for supporting the show in that way. And Denmark, man, I got to tell you, I, you know, I keep forgetting. Uh, Copenhagen was beautiful, and and where I was staying was close to Hamlet's Castle. And I, I forget the name. You'll know the name, I'm sure, right away. But Denmark, I was there over the holidays. Man, you guys go crazy with the fireworks for New Year's Eve. And as somebody who loves fireworks, I had so much fun. Blasting off completely in the United States, your fireworks that kids are wielding, totally illegal here. I had the best time ever uh, there. It was fantastic. Hey, John and Rob again. Oh, wait. Uh, Rasmus comes back. Rasmus. Um, well, thank you again for coming back and supporting the channel. Hey, John and Rob, again, forgot to include that, first of all, I love it whenever you talk about Mads Mikkelsen or any other Danish actor. Thanks for that. However, I want you to pronounce Mad's name correct. The D is silent. So it's Maz Nicholson? It's not Mads Nicholson, it's Maz Nicholson? I'll say that. Maz Nicholson. Okay. The D is silent. Uh, like in Django. The D is silent. I love that. Um, I'm a huge fan. Like I, you know, I'm a, a, a big fan of Lars von Trier. I remember seeing. His, I think it's his first feature, The Element of Crime. Hard to find, but I have uh, have it on DVD. Criterion put it out only on DVD, though. So I've been a fan of, of Danish cinema. I mean, I remember seeing The Celebration was knocked out by that. I love the whole Dogma 95 movement. And, um, uh, I, I, you know, I think Dan the, the Danish film industry is pretty vibrant. And there's some pretty great stuff. I, I loved Another Round with Maz Nicholson. So it's Maz Nicholson. All right. Um, that's good to know. Well, Rasmus, thank you for supporting the channel. Maz Nicholson. Stormin Norman. Stormin Norman sends in a $10 tip and says, John, I believe 
Brian O'Connor was always meant to be in uh, Fast 10. It was implied in Fast 9 when you saw his blue Nissan Skyline pull up to the family barbecue. So I think his addition is story driven. And I enjoyed Fast 9, but still hoping Fast 10 is even better. Well, Storm and Norman, I mean, I think you're right because in universe, he's not dead. Uh, it's just a question of, you know, when you go there, I, I, I think we're going to reach a point in our, I don't know, cinema going or our entertainment. Like, are we going to accept recreations of actors that we know are no longer with us, interacting with human beings in movies. I think, I, I don't like that idea. I think one of the great appeals of movie going is seeing our fellow human beings writ large on the big screen, 40 feet high. And knowing, like, I even had a problem knowing that Luke Skywalker from the, the episode, the Mandalorian episode of Book of Boba Fett, wasn't at all Mark Hamill and even his voice was AI. Now, like in an animated show, I, I wouldn't have any problem with it. But when you're watching live action and I'm watching this recreation of somebody that isn't real, I mean, this is a weird meta. I, maybe I have to go to a therapist and get some therapy to get over this aversion. I don't like it. I don't like the idea that we're going to see actors that aren't real um, and being passed off as being real. I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, Plinko Price sends in a tip and says, Hey, John and crew. Now, I know a lot of people think Tom Cruise will turn up in Doctor Strange too. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Sam Rockwell read for Tony also? What are your thoughts on the possibility of a Justin Hammer becoming superior Iron Man? You know what? That makes a lot of sense, actually, and it, it, in terms of canonical in-universe stuff, I like that idea. I mean, I you know I love, I I I love Sam Rockwell. He's a he's a great performer. I really dig him, and if he comes up and shows up as Superior Iron Man, hey, why not? I would totally be on board with that, 100. Uh, percent This one comes from Hitchcock is the goat. Sends in a tip one of three. I saw three good movies on Saturday. Northman, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Great day indeed. What a great triple feature. I know I'm in the minority, but although I enjoyed Everything Everywhere All at Once, it was kind of all over the place for me and hard to keep up with, but moments of great fun. I feel The Northman was probably cinematically the best of the three I saw, but because of the seriousness, dark tones, and brutal nature, it probably won't make it a rewatch for me. Damn, Nicole Kidman was great as she is always. But for me, Unbearable Weight was far and away my favorite. Loads of fun and Pedro Pascal stole the movie even though Cage was the focus. Funny, funniest movie I've seen since 2018's Game Night. I'm taking a friend of my son to see it on Tuesday. Let the cage stance begin. Well, Hitchcock is the goat. Uh, you know, it's uh, different strokes for different folks. I mean, the things that hit people, uh, you might have wanted to be in the mood for more of a comedy. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, you know, what I like to see, I like that that is a, a, a pretty eclectic, diverse uh, trifecta you have there. And it's, it's, it's not surprising that you found um, Unbearable Weight was, was something that you really, really loved. I, I think that's incredible. And I, I think that if that was your favorite, then that's your favorite. And you don't have to apologize for it. And uh, I guess you're not really apologizing, but but if something doesn't work for you, there's no no harm, no foul. It doesn't work for you. And and that's that's what movies are all about. But look, I think what you did get was three good experiences at the film, at the at the picture shows, in the theaters. So that's that's always a good thing. So yeah, and they're all I just love the fact, isn't it great that we have that kind of storytelling? diversity in our I mean you got comedies you got brutal violence you got crazy multiverse things that's not Marvel I mean that kind of diversity is pretty neat when it comes to storytelling I'm all down about that uh, Tristan Jones sends in a tip and says hey John and crew with the newest newest episode of Moon Knight just a few days away what is your predictions and if you're seeing this after it's already aired 
What are your thoughts on the episode? Well, I have to say, I just watched the fifth episode of Moon Knight last night. I, I thought it was really interesting and really clever and delving into, obviously, the backstory of what was going on. I mean, it was pretty bonkers. Now, I have to say, I really liked it in terms of where they've set up the show and how they're telling a story and where it's all going. But again, as somebody pointed out earlier in this mailbag, it's not the way I would have gone with the Moon Knight show. Uh, because the focus is less on Moon Knight and more on Mark and Steven, obviously. And I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that, but it just seems like it isn't, it's just different. It's just different from what I was expecting. But in terms of what I think is going to happen, you know what? I, I, I would like to refrain from speculating. Um, I, I, I really, I don't want to say anything, but I think, I think it's going to have a very um, satisfying conclusion, I think. So, um, yeah. So that's, I, I think it's, I, I just don't want to, I don't want to, Maybe ruin it for anybody. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. But I think it's going to be great. Uh, Kyle Hicks. Hi, John and crew. Writing in from Australia, where I loved, I, I lived there for a year in 2005. It was so much fun. Big fan of the show. I love movies and everything to do with them. And I want to make a career as in the movie world. I've written a couple of screenplays and I want to share my ideas with the world. I've so far completed three screenplays that I want to direct and produce and potentially star in these projects, but funding is a problem. I'm on my way with working two jobs and started a GoFundMe page, but with no success. What are your thoughts? And bring on the filthy. Well, Kyle, first of all, um, kudos to you for wanting to work into the film business. You know, it's a really difficult, hard business and finding funding, finding money to make any movie is incredibly difficult. But, you know, I would suggest this. Obviously, you're shooting for the moon, but I would start small. You know, rather than writing feature-length screenplays, write, write a 10-page script and go make that movie. Most of the filmmakers in the world started out making short films and small projects and worked their way up. Um, you, you have to prove yourself. No one is going to take you seriously in the film business until you've actually made something. And, you know, if you made a short film, whether it's 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes... And they're great. You can send them to festivals and get exposure all around the world. You have to hone your craft. You know, making movies is one of the hardest, most difficult things in the world to do. And you can't just, I mean, some people out of the gate can become rich and famous, but most people don't. Most people aren't successful at it. I'd start small. And I'll tell you something. The best way to learn how to make movies is to make movies. So I think that's what you, that's what you have to do. That's, that's the advice that I would give you. Get out there and start shooting. You'll learn more about writing screenplays and, and how, to, how films are actually made by going out and making one. And uh, that, that would be my, um, my advice. And when you do, I want to see it. Send it in. Send it to us. Anonymous sends in a $20 tip. Hello, I feel for you all trying to rename the show is no small task. I'm starting a booth to sell art at Comic-Cons and we have been in the naming trenches for weeks. Here are some ideas for yours. Next up, Verisimilla Dudes. <laughs> oh, I'll take that. I'm the Verisimilla Dude. I'm going to steal that from you. And letters to Geo. Verisimilla Dude. <laughs> I love that. Naming's tough, man. It's hard. It is hard. Uh, Panther Crap. Panther Crap sends in a tip and says, Hey, y'all. Any word on new adaptations of Anne Rice books for the screen? I heard rumblings of Amazon doing the Vampire Chronicles a couple of years back, but nothing as of late. Love the show. Congrats on the new studio. Well, Panther Crap, I'm a huge Anne Rice Vampire Chronicles fan. And I keep reading about various iterations. They're going to do the Mayfair Witches, or they're going to do the Vampire Chronicles, or whatever the hell heck they're going to do. But I don't... Nothing... nothing uh, I, I haven't had anything that's been tangibilized yet. I just keep seeing articles about, well, so-and-so's developing this, so-and-so's developing that, I, or, and then so-and-so loses a showrunner. Um, so I don't know. 
Uh, it's hard to say. But, I mean, I'm sure it's going to happen at some point. I mean, I still don't understand why Tom Cruise wasn't in the Vampire Lestat. Uh, I don't know why. He wasn't. But what can you do? What can you do? Uh, Alex Bedminster sends in a tip and says, Hey, John, if aliens came to Earth and you had to show them a movie that best represents who we are as a species, which movie would you show? Uh, the show name that I have is Hit Record. You often say to make a film, grab a phone and hit record or press play. Press play isn't bad. I like press play. Um, that's pretty good. I like that. But you know what? I think that if I was going to... A movie that best represents us as a... Re, best resents, Best represents us as a species... You know what? Maybe Terrence Malick's um, uh, recent director's cut that Criterion released of his film Tree of Life. Because, remember, if you're showing aliens that have come to Earth, you have to show them things that were, would require less context. You couldn't show them a comedy. They wouldn't know what the hell was going on. You couldn't show them, like, a war film because they, do they understand what war is? I mean, they might. I think you'd have to show them something that is almost without dialogue that can convey, in through images, convey beauty um, and can convey the human condition. So Tree of Life is just the first thing that popped into my head. I don't know if that's the right, the right call, um, but maybe. I don't know. Or maybe, you know, I'd go weird. I'd go like a Tarkovsky movie maybe, like The Sacrifice or something like that. I, I don't, or, or an Ingmar Bergman film. But it's that's a tough one. What's a that's a great question. What do you guys think? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you had to show you you could show one movie to an alien species that would sort of encapsulate humanity, what would that be? Comment down in the comments and tell me what you would do. Dead Fire Band sends in a tip. One of two. Hi John and crew. Been watching for as long as I can remember. All the way back to the AMC days. First time writing in, but I wanted to share my name idea with you. The Schnepp work. A touching tribute to the late, great John Schnepp that I have no doubt would have been moving into the new studio with you guys. The connective tissue between you and Rob. Good luck with everything going forward. Much love from Scotland. Well, you know, uh, first of all, I like the idea. The, I like the idea of a Schnepp work, but the problem is we... I don't think it would really brand the channel for someone else to take over at some point or or to get new people. You'd always have to explain why is your why, why is your show called the Schnepp work? And I think John would appreciate it, but we don't own his name. You know, you can't I don't know how great it would be if we just did that. But I like the title. I think I think there could be a show called the Schnepp work. I just don't think our show should be called the Schnepp work. Uh Ligot Name suggestions for the show. Sends in Talking Media, Campy and Crew. Love the show. Been watching since the AMC days. Thanks and bring on the filthy. Well, John has said that he doesn't want to use John, his name, like John or Campia, in the title of the show. So it gives it more versatility. And I can understand that. Um, but uh, Talking Media is not bad. I don't think Talking Media is bad at all. Um, Plush Rush. I know you're looking for a new name for the show. What about the best damn movie related show? <laughs> you say it in your intro already, so it feels like a natural fit. Plus it tells us that you talk about not just movies, but everything else related to them. Thanks. You know what, Plush? I like that idea. The best damn movie related show. Why not? That's not bad. And it's something John says. It's it's branded to John Campia. So why not? The best damn movie related show. That's pretty good. Um, uh, but I, I mean, I like it. That'd be something worth to bring up to John. Ian Stewart says, Hi, John and crew. For the past week, I've been watching the show at my desk with my eight-month-old daughter sitting on my lap. She watches the show and smiles, claps, and waves at all of you. Well, uh, Ian... 
Here's to your daughter. How you doing? Welcome to the world. I know you're only eight months, but I promise it gets better and uh, things come into focus and you'll find your purpose and you have a good father. So take that one to the bank. Uh, Scott Brown says, your new set looks awesome and I enjoyed the walkthrough video. I wanted to suggest a name if you're still looking for one. Entertaining commentary, where you discuss all things entertainment from movies, TV, and streaming with your host, John Campia. I like that. Entertaining commentary. Um, not bad. Ted Twist says, hey, I love the show. Can't believe you've been around for so long and YouTube just recently suggested your channel to me. Shame. Got a couple of show ideas. Seen it. But you must include the exclamation point for merch designs or seen it all. Um, I like that. We've seen it all. Or we've seen it all. That's not bad, Ted. Not bad. But you're right. you got to go with that exclamation point because that, that makes it. Without the exclamation point, hey, is this as good as it should be? I don't know. But that's I like that idea. Uh, Python sucks. Are you talking about Monty Python? Because if you are, I, don't, I can't go with you there. Hey, John, hope you're well. Here's a name suggestion for your new channel. What about The Riff Raff or Rogues Gallery? Anyway, have fun in Vegas. <laughs> you know what? I don't know if it's right for our show, but The Riff Raff is a great title for a show. The Riff Raff, because you're riffing. I like it. That's a great title. Don't know if it's right for us, but... That is a good title. Enjoyable. Uh, Galad. Galad writes in and says, Doctor Strange show, Doctor Strange 2 showing on 35mm at Quentin Tarantino's New Beverly Cinema on May 5th and 6th. Has that happened for any other MCU? If not, Quentin Tarantino must have seen it early and loved it for Disney to strike a film print just to be shown there. Masterpiece on our hands? Hype? Not hype? Well, Galad, I have to tell you, we saw the first 20 minutes, and they've released a clip from that section that we saw, and I I thought it was terrific, and it was very much in, in Sam Raimi's wheelhouse. It was so much fun. There was so much lore and information packed into that 20 minutes. It was just intriguing, and I had a smile on my face the whole time. Uh, it is it, it, breakneck pace. Uh, it looks really, really terrific. I can't wait. I mean, maybe Tarantino just loved it. You know, and maybe maybe because he's friends with Sam Raimi or something that they, they agreed and maybe Sam Raimi got Disney to pony up. Or maybe even Tarantino did because he wanted a print of it for himself. Uh, you never know. Could be interesting. Uh, believe the hype. I think the movie's going to be real. Real good. Anonymous sends in a tip and says, how about this for name? What We Watch has a simple acronym, uh, ac acronym to WWW, which could also resemble sound waves, which could be designed for a nice visual logo. Thoughts? Will and Utani. Um, I like that. What We Watch. It's kind of like you could, do, you could do promos that were like uh, 50s or 50s, 40s, Why We Fight videos. I like that idea. I don't think that's bad at all. What We Watch. Um, of course... When we're talking about things we haven't seen yet, what we're going to watch. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Carlos19 sends in a tip and says, show name idea. Let's talk about it. Would work with the different segments also like let's talk about movies. Let's talk about TV. Let's talk about Ray. Laugh out loud. Longtime fans since the AMC days. Love you guys and bring on the filthy. Let's talk about it. You know. Could work, but I think it's too generic. It's let's talk about it could be about anything if you didn't know what the show was. And that's, we want to have something that's both catchy, clever, witty, funny, and encapsulates everything that we do. It's, that's a tall order. It's a tough one. Really, really, uh, really hard. Hard to come up with. Connor M. sends in a name idea. The Pop Culture Breakdown. Again, that's what we do, but... Is that a sexy enough show title? Um, you know, like I think about shows like uh, uh, Good Morning America. Good Morning America, great show title, great concept. Entertainment Tonight. Da -na 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 -na. Everyone knew what that was. Of course, they already have those 
Those are great show titles. We need something like that. Something catchy, quick, tells you what it is. Uh, Jason H. says, show title suggestion, cue the cut. Again, uh, I think it's it's it almost sounds like half of a sentence. But, um, hey, I'm there for it. I'm there for it. It's not bad. Uh, Frank says, I like the idea of a movie club on movies that were flops. It'd be really interesting to listen to you guys discuss why they didn't work. My friends and I love talking about bad movies. It makes us more aware of good filming. Filmmaking. Example, the new Mummy movie. Yeah, the new Mummy. That's not a bad idea. You know, I just don't know. I, I think John, you know, John is very smart about building his brand, talking about, I mean, we, we're we critical of things when we're talking about our analysis, but for the most part, like Movie Club is a celebration of things that we love. And if we did something that we intentionally didn't love, I mean, the funny thing is, I would rather talk about bad movies that I love and why I love them but I don't know how interesting that would be for anybody else. Um, don't know. Might be. Don't know. Tell, tell us uh, in the comments. Jason H. said, more show suggestions. Hold for sound. Room with a review. Aspect ratio. The show show. Thanks for all you guys and gals do. I love aspect ratio. But again, not a lot of people know what that is. The aspect ratio is the size of the screen that you're looking on. So when you say four by three, for instance, TV used to be four, four things wide, four units wide by three units long or high. And like a, a widescreen movie has an aspect ratio, a 4K film widescreen is two, three, nine to one. So for every one unit tall it is, it is two, three, nine units wide, giving you a rectangle. So I like aspect ratio because I'm a fan of home theater and I've been talking aspect ratios my whole life. So I love that idea. Uh, I don't know, again, I don't know if it's good for our show, but I like that I like that name. Uh, Dre B says, when I see Josh Brolin, I don't see Batman, I see Slade Wilson. Dude, dude, Josh Brolin playing all the villains. Uh, I, you know, I'm a huge proponent of the idea of Ben Affleck's Batman going up against Slade Wilson, Deathstroke, the Terminator. One of my favorite favorite DC villains. Uh, I, I heard that that's what they were going to do. I think it's that, that was reported and it just it bums me out we're not going to get that movie. Bums me out. But you should see Slade Wilson. That'd be great casting. Our friend Garden Variety Vagabond sends in a tip and says, John, here's a spitball name. The Virtual Water Cooler Film and Screen Community. Not bad, but a little long. John Campy's Virtual Water Cooler Film and Screen Community. I know they're a bit long, but I truly feel that it hits the nail on the head. Well, yeah, but but it, it, is it a good show title? Like, can you say, welcome to John Campia's virtual water cooler film and screen community. That's more of like the, the a, a place you go. I don't know if it's, if and it is, because that's the place we have here. I don't know if that's the best um, for a show, for a show name. Bruce sends in a tip, the daily screen or the daily screening Screen for both of its definitions. Have a good day. Well, I know John was trying to shy away from that, the word screen, but hey, those aren't bad. The daily screen. I kind of like that. Ezra Miller's plane ticket sends in a tip and says, hey, John and or Rob, I noticed in one of the TV spots for Dr. Strange, Strange is at Christine's wedding and is holding a card that says, congratulations, Christine and Charles. Do you think it has any significance? Also, a show name, The Watch List. I'm sure there's already a watch list, but that's not a bad name. Listen, as far as Doctor Strange being at Christine's wedding, I have no comment. No comment. And the reason I have no comment, Ezra Miller's plane ticket, is because we've seen that scene. It was in the first 20 minutes of the movie, and I'm not going to uh, talk about what that is all about, and I won't comment on it at all. But it's good stuff. Good stuff in there. Scott Brown says, with Morbius being total dog shit and Sony giving all the Spider-Man villains a movie and turning them into anti-heroes and the fact that there's no Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse, I've lost all hope and interest in this so far failed experiment. Well, Scott, you know what? I, I can't fault you for that. Um, it is weird what they're trying to do. Uh, it's I, I, I am not digging it. But um, 
Yeah, I, you're not wrong. It is kind of a failed experiment. And again, I don't think they have a real direction. And how did a movie like Morbius, which was wholly unsatisfying, how did that happen? I don't know. Don't know. But you're not wrong. Uh, Maria Seifring says, two suggestions for a show name. State of play. Ooh. That's a good name. The Dailies interview. State of play. State of play is a great name. I love that. I love that name. Um, State of play. Good, good title. Good title. I uh, like it a lot. Well done. John Campia's clone says, hey, John or Rob, I just saw The Northman the other night and was absolutely blown away. It was really something special. Eggers is becoming one of my favorites. I'm also going to see everything everywhere in a few days and can't wait. Well, I'm glad that uh, you dug The Northman. I, I'm sure I will too. I just very, very excited for it. So that is most excellent. And um, yeah, I'm there. I'm, I'm there for you. And uh, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about them. And it's funny uh, that you're John's clone. I wonder um, if you're going to help John. Is, does that mean he's going to work twice as hard? Because there's two of him now? Uh, we shall see. But report back and tell us what you, um, what you uh, thought. Sid. Sid sends in a tip and says, Missed hearing Chris's for why? After the El Muerto news. Wondering how WB will address the Ezra elephant in the room. And if they'll show you the first 15 of Black Adam. To be honest, Aquaman is my most anticipated. The undersea battle and fight give me goosebumps. Well, they did show a few things from Aquaman. And uh, we did see an Aquaman presentation. And it looks pretty dope. I mean, Black Manta has a Star Destroyer like at least the command deck of his submarine. Looks like it's a Star Destroyer. It's awesome. It's just awesome. And um, they didn't show us any of, of Black Adam except a new trailer. Which was okay. You know, it was good. It, it showed us a little taste of the movie. Um, and I'm sure that'll be dropping soon. But man, Aquaman looks just fantastic. So, yeah. I'm um, looking forward to it. Seattle Rye uh, sends in a tip and says, Possible show name ideas. The cardboard final cut. Oh, the call board, final cut, or wait a minute, hang on a second. You got to put, okay, possible show name ideas, the call board, final cut for all audiences, the run through, the showrunner show, running the watch, oh, the uh, <laughs> through, okay, the run through, the showrunners, show running, the watch list. Thanks for all you do on your show and keep up the filthy. We will, Seattle, and it's my hometown. Did you watch the NFL draft? But hey, you got to use commas, man. <laughs> Can't tell it. They're all good names. I mean, I, you know, uh, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting names. Fi I, you know, Final Cut could work in some way, shape, or form. MaxiPad sends in a tip and says, Hey, all, fan of the channel for many years now. And I wanted to show some support and send in my required show name suggestions for fun. All things entertainment. With the encompassing name being all things before the title. Example, all things Moon Knight. Thanks. That's not bad. All things entertainment. Um, you know, but again, a little generic. It, it needs, I think, a little uh, sexiness to it. But all things entertainment, not bad. Not bad, MaxiPad. Well done. Uh, Jay tipped in $5 and says, Hey, John, just wanted to send some potential new show name ideas, entertainment roundtable, uh, media roundtable, the roundtable, entertainment club, media club, the curtain call. All right. Uh, Manny Garcia sends in a tip and says, One of two. Um, you know what? I kind of like, and as I think about it, I mean, Curtain Call, Media Club, Curtain Call, I, could be good. I don't know. It's, there's a lot there. Hmm. Well, at least you got me thinking, Jay. Manny Garcia says, one of two, hey, John, maybe Rob. Uh, it is maybe Rob. 
just watched Moon Knight Episode 5, and holy crap, what an episode. Might be the best piece of streaming content for me MCU has put out. Just above the WandaVision, love persevering episode. Oscar Isaac totally crushed it and had me and my wife, wife, me and my wife tearing up throughout the episode. When that song at the end played, my wife totally lost it as that's the song they played at her grandmother's funeral. Ooh. Just when you think Marvel has done it all, they hit us with something amazing. Listen, I did think that episode five of Moon Knight was pretty spectacular. Um, very different. I, I didn't know where they were going with it, but it is pretty spectacular. Um, Caesar Rivera sends in a tip and says, new show name, Movie Group Media, MGM. Um, Movie Group Media. That sounds like a company name, not a show name. It's not a bad name. It just doesn't sound like it's for us. But Movie Group Media could be the name of a good company. But then again, people would be like, wait, you're MGM? But isn't there already an MGM? So, um, and there is. Yes, there is. Starman sends in a tip and says, hey, John and Rob, did you get a chance to check out the first episode of The Man Who Fell to Earth on Showtime? I found it really intriguing. Starman, I did not. I haven't watched yet. You know, I've got an aversion to Alex Kurtzman because of Star Trek, and he directed the first four episodes. But I am going to watch the show. Uh, I'm going to watch the show because I'm a fan of Walter. I'll tell you something interesting. The, mo the, the, mo the novel, The Man Who Fell to Earth, was actually written by Walter Tevis, who wrote The Queen's Gambit. That, of course, Anya Taylor-Joy was in. And also, The Hustler and the Color of Money. And so Walter Tevis wrote that book, and it was made into a movie starring David Bowie, directed by Nicholas Rogue, and I think it came out in 76. And I'm a fan of that original film. So this sequel, this is actually a sequel series. Bill Nye plays an older version of Bowie in the series. So I'm curious to see where it goes. I mean, I've, I want to like it. I've read very many mixed things. But I'm glad you dug it. I'm glad you dug it. Jenny Taylor sends in a tip and says, something, 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 new show name with that down. <laughs> with that down? <laughs> I know your source told you Deadpool wasn't in the movie, but with how quick they can shoot and edit a post-credit, I still think it's a possibility they shot something after you got the info. Um, I am not as convinced as John is that uh, Deadpool isn't in the movie. For that very reason, Jenny. I think you've hit on something. You never know. You never know. Um, John, Josh Craig sends in a tip and says, Warner Brothers is treating the Ezra situation the same way the Madrigal family treated Bruno. We won't talk about Ezra. No, no, no. <laughs> yep. I'm with you 100% right there, Josh. Um, I'll tell you, you know, at the Warner Brothers presentation, they trotted out the Flash movie like there was nothing wrong. And uh, they just chose to just breeze right by it. And maybe that's that's the way to go. So I'm not sure. Uh, Jack Noonan says, new name idea Revel Media, Revel Live, uh, definition of revel, to enjoy oneself in a lively and noisy way, especially with drinking and dancing. Definitely fits the tone of the show and, and doesn't sandbox you in anything like movie or TV talk would. That's true. I like the word revel. Your revels are now commencing or whatever. There's, uh, it's a great word. I, again, I don't know if it's the right name for us. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, your revels, there is a term, I think it's a Shakespearean line of dialogue that's on the tip of my tongue, but something about your revels, which I, I think that's an interesting way to go. But I like the idea. I like I like where you're going there, Jack. You and I park our shuttlecrafts in the same shuttle bay. Uh, Royce Freeman sends in a tip and says, show name suggestions, Limelight Church, Behind the Limelight. I like the name Limelight, and I think it would be cool to include Limelight, also the name of a good rock song. Uh, but I, I, you know, behind the limelight, you know, something like that's not bad. I just think that limelight, again, we'd have to explain it to people where, where, we're, coming, where we're coming from with that name. But it's not a bad name. 
Uh, I like the idea of using Limelight, but I don't know if it's really for us, Royce. But not bad. Darth Sidious, our old friend Darth Sidious. Hey, John and crew. Well, hello there. I've been patiently analyzing all of the show name suggestions along with your helpful critiquing and have created an algorithm <laughs> that can generate nothing less than the most perfect show title ever produced. So please, tune into the next episode of John Campia's Cinescreen Entertainment Theater Flick Showtime Movie Club, now with more explosions, sponsored by Manscaped. I take credit in the form of Bitcoin. Thanks, and bring on the filthy. Well, Darth Sidious, uh, John doesn't want to use his name or the word screen in your name, so your algorithm failed you. It failed you. Uh, much like your your accomplices or your your um, apprentices have failed you, Darth Sidious. So, but it was a good shot, and I do appreciate the effort because coming up with algorithms ain't easy. Um, Derek Large sends in a tip and says, "Show name ideas: Twenty Four Frames, The Movie Queue, Talk of the Town, and Movie Town Rundown." Love the show, guys. Uh, those are all pretty good. You know, again, they are a bit generic. I think we need we need something sexy. We need something sexy that grabs you like right away. You know, like I said, like like uh, Good Morning America, Entertainment Tonight. Those are great great names because uh, they roll off the tongue. If it doesn't roll off the tongue, we can't do it. Um, Benny S. Benny S. Says, seeing as everyone's throwing out show name ideas, I want to play. So, Fellowship of the Screen. You know what? I kind of like that, but it is, you know, it's too much. It's too Lord of the Rings centric, but it's great. The Daily Pundits. But that could be anybody because there's political pundits, sports pundits. Uh, this is the screen. Pundit League of Entertainment. That's showbiz. And last but not least, the Game Day Guild. Scoff at your heart's desire. You know, the thing about the Game Day Guild is our watchers, our viewers would know what that means, but non-viewers wouldn't. So, um, yeah. But I like, I like, thanks for the effort there. McDavid deserves better, sends in a tip and says, show name idea. Picture motion. It's a play on motion picture with motion referring to the following of trends, news, and topical issues in the world of on-screen entertainment. Others, fun scripted, that's a little weird, the dailies, uh, and scene sight. You know what? I like the dailies. The dailies, I mean, you could do it. You'd have to have a graphic that would kind of support what you're talking about. A lot of people don't know what dailies are, but I do like that. I do like that because... It 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 uh, it's a daily show. It it it's an entertainment movie term. McDavid, not bad, McDavid. But you deserve better, as it says in your name. Um, and I'm just gonna say, I hope you get better. I hope you get what you deserve, McDavid. But those are good ideas. Good ideas. I, I like the way you're. I like the way you're going. Iron spam. Iron spam. Man, I don't want to eat iron spam. I mean, I've eaten enough spam in my life when I was younger, going on like Boy Scout camping trips and stuff, but iron spam doesn't sound good. I mean, I know what you're doing. You're thinking about Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Ham, and you're renaming him Iron Spam if Iron Man had a Peter Porker of his own. Uh, hey, guys, some channel title suggestions. Fan banter, fan desk, lonely fandom, lonely fans, planet fandom for show segments. Hot drops for the studio, secret rebel base. Keep up the good work and crack. Congrats on the new studio. Well, you know, I don't think we could, we'd want to call it lonely fandom or lonely fans because that's inherently kind of negative. Fandom is already lonely enough. I know. Trust me. But um, fan desk, fan banner, those aren't bad. But, you know, we want to consider ourselves a little. We're fans, yes, but we are learned pundits as well. Uh, Patojo Chispudo sends in, oh, that's a cool name. Uh, did I get that right, Patojo? Patojo Chispudo, that's a great name. Hi, John and crew, big fan of the show. 
Uh, Shirley drops my productivity at work. Haha. <laughs> hey, yo, we take no responsibility for your lack of productivity at work. Don't blame us. Don't blame us. I love Moon Knight with Oscar Isaac. Good Guatemalian. Good Guata Guatemalian kid, by the way. I was going to say Guatemalian. <laughs> Guatemalan kid, by the way. I knew that, actually. Did you get any signs about Moon Knight going into any of Disney's upcoming movies? Thanks. Good luck in Vegas. I have not heard Moon Knight appearing in any other Moon uh, MCU property. However, interestingly enough, you could Google Thor and Moon Knight and see what comes up. Now, I'm not saying we're going to see that. I'm just saying the Google Thor and Moon Knight. I don't think that Moon Knight is ever going to show up in Thor. But if Moon Knight, if they said Moon Knight was showing up in an upcoming MCU project, I'd be like, you know what? Thor, Love and Thunder, there's a comic canonical reason why he would. But I'm not saying he is. But, I, you know, maybe. Who, who knows? I, know, I don't know. Anonymous sends in a tip one of two. Hey, guys, I said earlier in a tip message I went to see three movies on Tuesday. I saw The Northman, which was good, given an 8 out of 10. I also saw The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which was also good. But I agree with the, with John when it's not as great as other people said it was. But the last movie took me by surprise, and that was The Bad Guys. Bad Guys. I have to say it was the best DreamWorks animated movie I've seen in a long while, and I really hope it gets a sequel. Wow, Anonymous. That's high praise. I don't think I've heard such high praise coming in on The Good Guys. You know, there were some people, I remember John read out a um, a tip a couple weeks ago from somebody who, I guess, had worked on the film and wanted to know what we thought about it or what our take on it was. And it's I'm glad to hear you say that. I hope that person is watching this mailbag right now and heard you say that DreamWorks animated movie, Bad Guys, is the best animated movie you've seen in a long while. And you hope it gets a sequel. I love that. That's fantastic. Uh, Sebastian Trujillo says, name idea, The Together Show. Your channel has always been about community, watching movies together, watching TV together, reading comic books together. Even if we're far away, we share this passion through your show together. Well, Sebastian, I love the sentiment. The problem is, The Together Show, if I heard that name, I would think that somebody was telling me I, it's a therapy show. Have you seen The Together Show? If you're feeling discombobulated, tune in. No, so that, that's the first thing I thought about. I mean, I like the idea. I like the sentiment. I like the sentiment of it all. But I don't know if it works as a show for us. Uh, Drew Larson sends in a tip and says, Hey, John and crew, I have the lassopho... Oh, oh, I have lassophobia, which is the fear of open water. I'm really excited for Avatar 2, but I've heard there's a lot of open water scenes. There are. It looks like they've gone to move to the coast and there's lots of scenes. Uh, having seen the trailer, do you think you'll be frightened by it? Thanks and keep up the great work. Well, Drew, a lot of it, it takes place in, in, on, and around the water. So if you're not, if you really have bad lassophobia, oh, it's, it's thalassophobia. I have thalassophobia. Not lassophobia, thalassophobia. Um, I, could see it, I could see it triggering uh, for you a little bit, a little bit. But it is beautiful. It was, it was stunning. Really stunning. Uh, Crazy Eddie sends in a tip and says, show name suggestions. The Motion Picture Show. Also, how long do you think the MCU will last? Seems like it will go on forever. Well, you know, as long as, as far as, first of all, the Motion Picture Show, again, a little generic because we talk about streaming and we talk about other things. So maybe a little generic. Sometimes we even dip into video games. So I don't know about that. But as for how long the MCU will last, well, you know, the comics have been around for decades. And as long as they keep telling good, compelling stories that people love, well then, I don't see why the MCU can't go on forever. I mean, you never know. I mean, it, it could. could go on forever. Um, as long as they, look, as long as they tell great stories with great characters, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Um, Cooper Wood sends in a $20 tip. Well, thank you, Cooper Wood. Story time or story club for the new show title? Uh, again, I think story time is kind of a generic term. And story club, we already have movie club. And maybe people think that we're going to be reviewing books. Which, 
By the way, I think that's a fabulous idea for this channel, but it might not be our audience's speed. But um, yeah, Storytime or Story Club just seems a little too generic for me. A little too generic. Anonymous sends in a tip and says, Hey, glad to hear you guys are enjoying CinemaCon. We did. How about the Fellowship of the Screen for a new name? Um, <laughs> people just said that. The Campia Crew community are a fellowship of sorts, and it's obviously a play on the title of the first Lord of the Rings film. Just an idea. Well, it's not bad. The Fellowship of the Screen, but you know what my problem with that is? is, is it, it's a knockoff of Fellowship of the Ring, and it always will be. And while I agree, I agree with you, we have a t close-knit crew. I mean, I swear to God, if we wanted to, John Campia could lead us robbing the bank in heat. But instead of getting captured and getting into a gun battle, we would succeed. Our crew, Ray, Fact Checker Jonathan, Aaron, Chris, myself, and, and Campia leading the way. We are such a good crew. We're like Neil McCauley's crew in heat, but we would win in the end. So there you go. Um, noobs. <laughs> noobs. Hello, noobs. Noobs sent in a tip and said, your show is as entertaining as the movies we all love. Show name, Ushers of Entertainment. Ooh, there's something about that that appeals to me. Although, you know what? I mean, Ushers, no offense to those people who are currently Ushers, but I'm like, Ushers. I, I, it works as a show title, but I, I'm like, gosh, I've worked so hard in my life to still be an Usher. I don't know. But I do appreciate the kind words about the show, noobs. Very much so. And thank you for supporting the channel in that way. Mike G. Uh, name suggestions. Screen John, The Final Frontier. That is all. Love the coverage this week. Well, Mike, thanks for loving our CinemaCon coverage. It was a lot of fun to do. Uh, I still want to talk about the Neon panel, which I haven't been able to talk about. But um, it was good. And David Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future. Wow, what a bonkers trailer. Um... I'm glad you love the coverage. And I, the thing about Screen John, The Final Frontier is a movie, you're referring to John's name, and he didn't want to have his name in it, and Star Trek, which I don't usually mind, but there ain't no way John Campy is going to have a show that even alludes in a small way to Star Trek. Not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent. Show name idea. Oh, this comes from Mitchell Chandler. Mitchell Chandler. Uh, how you doing, Mitchell Chandler? Show name idea. Entertainment coverage daily. It's broad, no current companies with a similar name, and act accurately describes what the John Campion Show does, but allows for additional content to be created without hindrance of theme. Other name, fandage, Fandom Coverage Central. Yeah, um, set, they're close, they're not bad. They don't jump out at me, though. Um, uh, Chubbs you busy? Is that Chubbs you busy? Is that what we're saying? Show name thought. Your show is populated with great personalities like you, Rob, Chris, and Ray. I think your show name should focus on the strength of this core group and their varied opinions. How about the J crew? J is for John, obviously. You know what? Chubbs, you busy. I, I like your thinking there. I like the thought process there. I don't know. Again, John doesn't want his name in the title, the J. Crew. And plus, it obviously refers to J. Crew, which is tough. But um, I like where you're going. I like the idea of that. Uh, I just don't know if that's right for us. Roy says, show names, just spitballing. Until next time. What's next? Uh, filmy, filmy, filmy thoughts instead of filthy thoughts. Uh, front row and let's get nuts. Uh, not bad. Again, you know, we also want to attract people that might not have ever watched the show before and get them to come to watch it. Would they watch it based on this? Don't know. Um... Garden Variety Vagabond says, The incident that occurred on stage for Olivia Wilde was Bush League, and she handled it like the amazing pro that she is. Statements by her former husband point to it being the decision of the process-serving company and not Sudeikis. Bravo, Miss Wilde. Well, Garden Variety Vagabond, 
could not agree with you more. I was there. I was in the room. She's like, she took the thing, made kind of a funny joke of it all, and then opened it up and said, oh, I know what this is, and got back to work. N- unflustered. By the way, uh, Olivia Wilde was a very impressive presence. I mean, obviously, she's a beautiful woman, but so what? You know, she's really articulate. I actually, I can't say, but but maybe you've seen some early work of hers that got Don't Worry Darling greenlit. She's an amazing talent. Book Smart was beautifully directed. She knows her stuff. She's the real deal. And after seeing the trailer for Don't Worry Darling, it becomes one of my number one movies of the year to see. Can't wait. Uh, really looking forward to seeing it. And again, she handled that situation like a pro. Jeans Gray sends in a tip and says, a few show name ideas. Your thoughts now, your thoughts below. Feeling movies, screen camp. Made the last one before I learned of your parameters. Um, well, your thoughts now and your thoughts below are more like questions. So, and feeling movie and screen camp, we didn't want to use screen, I know, you, as you know. Um, I, I just don't think they, they, they sell it what we want for them to sell. JR sends in a tip and says, has AMC Universal gone mad? The Jurassic Park series is one of my favorite franchises, but selling Dominion double feature tickets a month before anyone has even seen it? Do they have that much faith in the movie to think people will want to watch it two times over five hours? Probably. I mean, let's face it. Uh, It's dinosaurs eating people in city streets. What is not to love? As you all know, I'm so there for that. And I think, yeah, I think people are going to want to see it again. I think so. Omar, OVO24. Hey, John. Hope you're doing good. John is doing good. What are your thoughts on Sam Raimi saying he'd be open to do a Spider-Man 4? I'd love to see that they can adapt the Spider-Girl storyline. And there's so many other stories they can adapt from comics where Pete is an adult. Well, they could. I mean, maybe they should make a Spider-Man 4. Look, I've told John. I'm like, you know, how interesting would it be to see... What does Spider-Man do when he's 45 years old? Like... Tobey Maguire comes back and plays Spider-Man, Peter Parker. Peter Parker still still fighting crime. But what does he do at 45? You know, how does he think? What is his life like? I I, I would be totally in to seeing something like that. I mean, I I, I would. Um, you know, I, I, I think it'd be cool. And Sam Raimi could direct it. Could be interesting. And you're right. There's a lot of stories in the comics they could adapt. Dr. Nova says, when I saw the Northman, I had to move because these people were talking quietly. I'd never seen uh, film Twitter in real life before. The trailer for Top Gun came up and they said, Hollywood is running out of ideas. And I thought, you are currently seeing the Northman and you walk out and you can see everything everywhere all at once and the unbearable weight of massive talent. I hate cinema parrots who are people who just don't have their own opinion and just copy other people's opinions. Bonus number three. The Northman is the best movie I've seen this year, including the unbearable weight of massive talent, the Batman and everything everywhere all at once. It's all, all in all, it's been a great week. Well, Dr. Nova, first of all, thanks for supporting the channel in that way. And I'll tell you, you know, this idea that, oh, Hollywood has run out of ideas, that's the most lazy, first of all, it isn't true. And, and it's such a lazy thing to say, and I'm, I'm with you 100% on that. Um, but yeah, and people just, it's just a thing to say. It's a thing to say when you don't have any, you're just making comments. And by the way, Top Gun 2, Top Gun Maverick, we've seen the whole movie here over the uh, John Campion show, and it rules. It rules. And I'm not just saying that. They didn't buy my opinion. It, it rules. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. I made a joke yesterday on the stream. It's a lot better than Money Never Sleeps, which was the long and coming Wall Street sequel, um, which is at the time seemed like one of the longest and coming sequels ever. Top Gun is better than that. Dexta. Dexta sends in a tip and says, Hey, crew, congratulations on the new studio. Show name ideas, the studio, studio insider, beyond the studio. Also, started D&D with my kids. What did I get myself into? 
On top of that, I'm relaunching my YouTube channel. Well, Dexter, what you got into with your kids is a whole lot of imagination and fun playing D&D, right? Come on. And by the way, you're a heck of a dad doing that. That's very cool. And congratulations on restarting your YouTube channel. I don't know about the studio, Studio Insider, Beyond the Studio. I don't know. I don't know if that works for us. I don't know if studio is the right way because we're in a studio and people might mistake it. We're talking about the studio. What, which studio are we talking about? But it's not bad. Not bad. Um, David's Sock and Lotion. Oh, David, I love hearing your name. I love reading it aloud. Let's do it again. David's Sock and Lotion tip and five bucks and says, hello, John and or Rob. Hope you're doing well. We're doing well. Back from Vegas, having a good time, setting up the studio. I wanted to give my input on the thoughts of a Woody movie. Don't do it. They have already established that Woody came from a TV show called Woody's Roundup. Give us a Disney Plus series on that. Well, okay. Uh, and that would be fun, though. I, I would after you, after you see Lightyear, you'll say to yourself, I would watch a Woody movie. And who's to say they never made one? Because as you know, Lightyear, we can tell you, Lightyear, it starts out in 1995, you know, Andy got his first Buzz Lightyear toy and it was a toy from his favorite movie. This is that movie. Lightyear is a movie from the Toy Story universe that Andy went and saw in a theater and that's how he became a fan of Buzz Lightyear. So... Hey, John, how did you like the black phone? When I saw the trailer, it easily became one of my most anticipated movies. And all the early reviews of it have been glowing. Ethan Hawke looks great. It actually looks like a thing of nightmares. Well, first of all, it's low-budget horror done right. So effective. Limited locations. Limited scope. Great acting. Really good directing. And it will... It, it, it delivers. Uh, black phone's great. Ethan Hawke was great in it. Threw himself into his performance. And uh, you're gonna, I don't, the, the less said the better, but you are going to like it. And it, it, it will probably uh, indeed, indeed give you nightmares. Just saying. Uh, this next one, what do we got here? Cameron Ross sends in a tip and says, Hey, John, do you still watch Superman and Lois? If so, how do you feel about season two? It's been great so far. You know, I watched the first season. I haven't jumped, jumped into the second season season yet, uh, but I want to see it. I really liked the first season quite a bit, a lot more than I might have thought. Uh, it was really good. So I really I really enjoyed it. Very much so. Uh, Matt says, Hey, John, I awkwardly ran into Aaron, Chris, and Ray the other night at Caesars and yelled, I love your show. I was a little starstruck and had eaten an edible about an hour before, but your team couldn't have been more polite and gracious. Well, Matt, I just want to thank you for your enthusiasm for the show. Thanks for tipping in 20 bucks. But remember, you know what? If you'd eaten an edible an hour before, I think shouting out, I love your show, is the proper response. So there's nothing for you to be embarrassed about. And uh, I'm glad that Ray, Aaron, and Chris represented the show well. Because if they hadn't, you know, we would have had to bring out the ruler and spanked them all. Um, fi uh, not not literally, probably figuratively. But I'm glad it worked out. And um, I'm glad they are very gracious people. All of them. Uh, even Ray. So I'm glad you had a good experience. Oh, Matt goes on. And goes on I guess he didn't put his name down. Uh, and tips another $20 and says, I'm, I'm sure it was... Not a big moment for them, but I just wanted to let you know it totally made my night. Also, my contribution to your many show title suggestions, Pop Cultured. That's a great title. Pop Cultured is a great title. Um, I don't know if it's been used before. That, that seems to be something that would have been used, but Pop Cultured is a good title. And I have to say, um, you know, it never gets old when viewers come up and talk to us. Uh-oh, someone's calling me. It never gets old when viewers come up to us and express their love of the show or they like something we said or because, you know, we are trying to build a community here. So, you know, as long as people aren't crazy and weird like I am can be sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, it's so nice to meet you because I do that, too. Um, you know, and respectful. and It's it's a joy. It's a joy to meet our, our, our audience. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I loved I love it. 
Uh, Dr. Harrow sends in a tip and says, show name suggestions. In the limelight, off the reel, chef pleasures and friends, and what Ezra did this time. <laughs> Love the show. Stay filthy and praise Amit. Uh, you know, those aren't bad. Um, I think chef pleasures and friends is exactly the way we should go with the title of the show. I don't think John will approve, but I think that, hey, maybe, just maybe, it won't be. It will not be Chef Pleasures and Friends. Although I would watch a Chef Pleasures and Friends show. Not going to lie. Uh, even if I didn't know Ray and like work with him, I would watch a show that he headlined. Absolutely. Adam sends in a tip and says, I love the CinemaCon coverage. Really hyped about Doctor Strange, Top Gun, and Lightyear. Show name suggestions. The Mediaverse. Everything Entertainment and top topics. Everything entertainment isn't bad. The mediaverse, that's not bad either. You know, play on words. Top topics is too, like, that could be like a quiz show. Top topics. I'm your host, Robert Meyer Burnett. Now, now it's time to meet our contestants. Um, but that's not bad. Uh, Alton J sends in a $20 tip all the way from Oahu. Aloha from Oahu, Hawaii. Love the show, guys. And congrats on the new studio. Got a few show name suggestions for your consideration. The Subjective Collective. You know what? That's a, that's, I don't know if that's a great name for us, for our show. But The Subjective Collective is a good name for a show. I'd watch that show. Troop Thought. The Grind Getaway. And The Escape Room. The Escape Room, that's not bad. That's not bad. The Grind Getaway and Troop Thought. Mm, not so much. But the subjective collective, I do like that. And uh, Alton, I want to thank you for coming all to us. Alton, all the way from Hawaii, from Oahu. You know, I'm a Halle bra that surfed the, the surf. What, I don't know, what I'm trying to say is I'm a Halle bra who surfed the North Shore bra. How about that? That was terrible. I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed I even said that. But anyway, love Oahu. Been there many times. Uh, big fan. Big fan. And to be honest, I did surf the North Shore, but it wasn't. It wasn't, it was further down from the main break. <laughs> so, just so you know. Uh, Connor sends in a tip and says, Hey, John and Rob, when do you think we will hear about the green light on Spider-Man 4? And do you think it will be part of a new Sony MCU deal or just a Sony property? Thanks for the show. It has really been great. Easily the best movie and TV show on YouTube. I've always told John that. I've said this show is the best movie uh, TV show on YouTube. It really is. And John just makes it better with his leadership and his desire to make the viewing experience always better, which is great. I mean, how many people have that? Um, Connor goes on to say, also, I know Rob watches Ozark about to watch the final seven episodes. So hyped, bro. My excitement for the seven episodes of Ozark is off the chain and they're available right now. The fact that they're not in my head and people are watching. People are watching them right now. And I have not seen them. And I can't wait. So, Connor, you and I park our shuttlecrafts in the same shuttle bay. So, yeah, I do want to see it. Uh, Elijah's Wood. I see what you did there. Greetings from Cyprus. Wow, cool. Been watching for five years. First time tipping. Show name suggestions. The early cut. Do you think that... Keegan's Joker might be related to Phoenix's Joker moving forward, or perhaps it being a copycat imitator who idolized him. That's interesting. Elijah's Wood. I don't, first of all, all the way from Cyprus is cool. Love that. I, you know, I don't know. I don't think they would do that. I don't think that that Barry's, Barry's Joker is a copy. Um, I think it's too much. I think it's too much continuity. But at this point, you never know. You never know. Uh, Iron Hawk sends in a tip and says, It's clear show names are getting tiresome, and I'm sure you'll glance over this, but I thought from the start maybe Stagecraft could work. No one has said it yet, and I couldn't let it go. You should announce one so people stop sending suggestions. <laughs> well, you know what, Iron Hawk? I'll, I'll tell you. I, I, as, I, as you know, I've been, I spent the last almost hour and a half reading people's show suggestions, but i got to say, I don't mind. I don't mind reading them because uh, people care. 
It's nice to know that the viewing audience is out there trying to come up with ideas, sending them to us, and someone's gonna someone's gonna throw one out. And John's gonna go, "That's it." Uh, I don't know what that is going to be, or when it's going to be, but it could happen. And uh, I like that. And I like that kind of engagement. I like the fact that people care enough to even think up names and send them in. So it's cool. I like that. Uh, this one comes from just Roy. Roy sends in a tip and says, Hey guys, I've been watching classic parody movies like Top Secret, Hot Shots, Airplane, The Naked Gun, and Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. Do you have any parodies that you enjoy watching or re-watching? Parodies, um... You know, I uh, well, I, you you mentioned some of my favorites. I mean, Airplane and Top Secret and, and uh, Naked Gun, but it's hard. A lot of them are too stupid for my taste. You know, I I don't like the stupidity, but but some of them are good. Like parody movies, it's hard to say. I the ones that you said are already come to mind. When I think parody movie, Airplane is the first thing that shows up in my mind. Airplane, then of course Top Secret, which is a little less, but. But uh, people know it. It's more like a cult version. If there are cult movies within this genre, Top Secret's one of them. And um, yeah, those are the ones I think about. But it's good. I'm glad you are, are doing that. What is your favorite? Which one do you like the most? And why? Put it down in the comments. Brian O'Connor sends in a tip and says, Congratulations on the studio. Loved the CinemaCon coverage. Lars von Trier should have directed the Fifty Shades series, if we're going to be honest. Bring on the filthy. Oh, my God. Now I, I never want that. I don't want to live in a world where I can't see that. Yeah, I mean, the, the Fifty Shades movies, and I watch them, uh, they needed to be a lot more filthy. <laughs> they needed to delve in, but, I mean, they could only do so much. I get it. I mean, they wanted to make money. What can you do? I can't. I can't get that mad. Uzi Khan says, greetings, team. Great coverage of CinemaCon. Your show gets me through the grueling days at sea while on deployment with the Navy. From the reactions of Top Gun 2, it seems like an Oscar contender for Best Picture. Will it do a $100 million plus opening? You know what? So I had a long conversation driving back from CinemaCon with my friend Cliff Stevenson, who John knows very well as well. And Cliff and I, even I said on the show, John didn't think, I think John said, no, that Top Gun was not going to make $100 million. I was sticking by my guns. I'm saying, yes, it will. Neither does our friend Cliff. He's like, Tom Cruise movies never open to $100 million. I'm like, bruh. There's always a first time. This movie is going to open to $100 million. I guarantee it. Guarantee. Because it's such a good, it's just a great movie. It's so much fun. So much fun. Ole sends in a, could this be the last, this is the last one. This is the last, this is the last mailbag question. And it comes from Ole, uh, who tips in $20. Ole says, with all the drama surrounding Ezra, could Discovery Warner Brothers rebrand the movie, and should they do it? Seems to me at this point that a multiverse Batman movie with the Flash in it would be a safer bet than a Flash movie that Batman is in. So shine on. No, I think, look, we saw at CinemaCon, Warner Brothers just announced the movie, one of the first things they put up, and people were digging it. So I think they're just going to, hopefully Ezra will get the help he needs, and uh, by the time the movie comes out 10,000 years from now, Maybe uh, everyone will have forgotten, but no, it doesn't come out in 10,000 years from now. But anyway, it, it's, um, I don't think they're going to try and m shuffle things around because they can't get away from the fact that it is a Flash movie. There's nothing you can really do about it. You have to sort of embrace the flashiness of it all. See what I did there? Well, that'll do it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kind souls, gentle beings... However you identify across these 28 known galaxies, at least known to the Kryptonians and Superman the movie, thank you for watching this episode of the John Campy Show Mailbag. Uh, I would like to congratulate and thank all of you from all of us. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and also sending in such great topics and show suggestions and things that we can talk about. Of course, if you want to send in tips to the John Campy Show, you can do so 24-7. Link is down below. And we will, if we deem them appropriate, we will read them in a future mailbag. Remember, all of our tips have their own separate show, The Mailbag. And John informed me today we might be doing mailbags starting, I don't know when, sometime soon. So uh, five days a week. So that's cool. 
And also remember, you can always send us Super Chats live while we're broadcasting from 10 a.m. to 12.30. John turns on the Super Chats for a very short period of time because we want to be able to get to all of the questions live. So there you go. And thank you for coming with us on the journey. I, of course, here's uh, Mr. Cavill, Superman and I. I'm Rob Burnett. You can find me, if you're not watching this channel, you can find me on Instagram at RM Burnett. You can find me on TikTok. I'm on TikTok, bro. <laughs> find me at the Post Geek Singularity. You can also find me on YouTube at Post Geek Singularity or find me on Twitter at Burnett RM. Thanks very much. And as always, have a better day.